welcome to Pavlog. In this episode, we're going to talk specifically on how to pick a puppy suitable for family with baby or young children. This is a follow-up video from the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, I'll put the link down below so you can take a look. I'd like to start this video with information on how to pick a puppy. If you like to have a big powerful breed like this, like a carnet corso, and if you have baby or children at home, choose puppy from a bloodline that is more stable. It has a more stable temperament. I will go and visit the demon sire. I'll go and visit the kennel myself with my children. So I can personally see how the dogs react to children. In Vinci's kennel, uh, there were five or six kind of corsos and all of them were very friendly. Some might be more interested in me. They want to come and sit next to me. There was this big boy, uh, he was leaning on me, you know, but some may be less interested in me, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. As long as I can, I can see that they, are, they get along with children, then I know the temperament is good. The way I picked up Ember is very similar. Uh, I like to go to, I actually prefer going to a kennel where they have children in the house as well. So other than seeing how the dog respond to my children, I can also see how the dogs react to owner's children. I think that's the most accurate information you can gather when you visit a kennel. So Ember here is more of a high energy dog. I prefer lower energy dog for children, but she seems all right. Well, I was impressed when I was buying Embrace, I went to the house and as we walked into the house, the male, Embrace's father was not aggressive, but he was definitely guarding. He didn't want us to go onto the property. So he was like barking at us. But I saw how, I saw how he responded the moment when the little kid go and uh, hug him. At, at that point, I knew the dog has good temperament. So being able to see how the dog respond to their own little masters, I can have the assurance knowing that the dog's temperaments are good. The next thing you have to do is pick a puppy, of course. What I do is uh, I will sit down with the puppies and the puppy I pick will be the one that actually is very interested in me. They will come sit next to me. Uh, some puppies are interested in me, but they, all they want to do is play. So they want to, they are, nothing wrong with it, it's just their energy level is higher. So the puppy may want to tug, they might be biting my clothes, pulling me. They just want to play all day. That is fine if I don't have children at home, but if I'm considering my children's safety, I'd rather have a lower energy dog. Unless you are into dog sport or you want some, your dog to work for you, if you just want a pet, then you, you probably want a lower energy dog. If I've got two or three puppies like sitting next to me all the time, I will pick the one that just calmly sit next, sits next to me, not the one that just want to tuck all the time, unless I really need a high energy dog. The higher the energy, the more work it is for you. I prefer low energy dog because it's less work, but that doesn't mean high energy dog pose any danger to your child. Some breed like Cane Corso, they are naturally high energy. If you love this breed, exercise them is important, training is important. It does not mean getting a high energy Cane Corso, your, your child is in danger. There are hundreds and thousands of people having high energy Cane Corso at home and they are doing just fine. So just, I just want, want to make, make that clear. It's just about the amount of work and your lifestyle, high energy dog can live with your child, no problem. Exercise and training becomes more important. So let's get on to training. There are some places where the dog can get super excited. Number one, around the door, around your entrance. Uh, that's where uh, people would ring the doorbell, mailmen come in and out, you come home. That's the place where dogs learn to get excited. So you will notice in my videos, my dogs are usually quite calm around the doorway and I, I found it very important. Because your child could be standing at the doorway, your dog wants to jump around and it's a 65 kilo powerhouse. Hopping onto the child can knock the child over. So I usually like to train my dog to wait around the door, to wait behind the door, go out and in after me, not before me. The point of this is when the dog wants to go out, they actually look at me wait for command before they go out or, go, or come back in. When they are waiting, they are still. When they are still, they are not going to cause problems. And if you have friends coming over, your dog is just, isn't just going to lunge at them. Some people are scared of dogs. You have a Carnet Corso, German Shepherd, Rottweiler, you're going to scare somebody. So it's good if your dogs are learning to wait behind the door. They are barking. The moment you are at the door, you say, back, 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 or go home, they'll wait. But that keeps everything safe. There are two things that can also get the dogs excited. Food. Excitement or possessive behavior can, can make dogs dangerous. Don't teach the dog though. Just eat, don't eat, teach the dog. He's allowed to watch, but he's not allowed to try and grab it from you. 
Don't teach the dog. Just look away. Don't look at the dog. Good boy, Benchy. Good boy. Good boy, Benchy. I really like my children to feed the dogs with me uh, under my supervision. That allows the dog to learn that the food can come from the little master. I need to listen to him more. Uh, and the child is learning about how to respect the dog when they are eating. So watch some of these videos on what I do with food. Good girl, good girl. Then she stay, then she sit. Sit. Then she's, then she's here, then she's sitting here. Yeah. Good girl boy, good now. Then she sit. Good boy. Ah, then she like a police dog. Like a police dog? Yeah. Then she go. Go, 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 go. go, 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 go. Oh, good. I did it. That's easy. That was easy, eh? Yeah. Just yeah. gently, gently, yeah. Oh, good yeah, don't bother him though. Hey, how about shoulder? Maybe shoulder is better. Just a little bit. Yeah, good boy, Benchy. Good boy, Ember. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Just let him know that you are nice. They can trust you when they mm -hmm. eat. Yep. I like them. So cute. Good. He's just licking the bowl, yeah. and then Mr. Daddy told me to not take the bowl away. Yeah. Getting the children to feed the dogs is very good training, good, very good bonding. Uh, what you need to make sure is okay. make sure the kids are not Mr. bothering the dogs. So don't move the dog's bowl away until the dogs are done. You know, when done. you're moving in the bowl, the dogs get nervous, and that's not good. So when, when you build enough trust, yeah. whatever your children does around the dog when they're eating is never an issue. No, children. But you're also teaching your kids not to annoy the dog while they're eating. That's, that you're kind of teaching both of them. The third thing you have to worry about is um, toys. Again, it could be uh, excitement or positive behavior. So I train my dog to play with certain objects and dogs can, can get really excited. But I don't allow my dog to grab toys off my children's hands. I've got some clips on um, training with toys and yeah it's just training with toys is something that I will be very careful with because big dogs like to tug and it's not a job for children. Tugging is between someone who has enough strings to hold not for a child so when my children are holding toys and my dog gets excited they want to go and grab a toy off my child's hand I would uh, apply correction there not allowed. Remember, no, don't jump, no, no. If your children is involved in dog training, then your dog's learning about your children and your children's learning about the dog. They know how to play with each other, they know how to respect each other, they know what each other like and dislike. Uh, speaking of like and dislike, uh, we talked about uh, in the last video, some people think it's cute to have a baby riding a dog, um, pulling their ears, poking them, and the dog was just so patient. To me, you're testing the dog's limit. And a dog this size, like a Cane Corso, or pretty much any dog, once they snap, they want to warn your child to stop, they don't, they're usually doing it by giving them a little mouth. And that can already break skin or, or worse, you know. So why, why do it? It's better if you teach your children how to play with the dog be gentle, gently stroke them. Don't poke them in the eye, pull them, pull the ear, pull their tail. Definitely don't ride on dogs. I don't know any dog that like to be ridden. I don't know, I've been around dogs all my life. I don't know any dog that like to be ridden. Dogs hate to be ridden. Pay attention to what your dog, how your dog respond to your children. If they hate what you are doing, especially when there's children involved, stop it. Uh, you'll find most of dog, well-trained dog, usually is trained by motivation, by drive. So if, the, if you want your dog to do something that your dog's not doing yet, your job is to find out how you can motivate your dog to do such task. Like, um, you know, how to train your dog to close the door, or open the door. These are not natural to dogs. Watch me, I will raise my voice once it's got it done. Good boy! Good boy, did you see him jump? They do it spontaneously because they feel excited when you say their command. Go get the door. Boom, they go and close the door for you. Because when they do that, you give them a reward, give them a praise, they love it. You know, that's how you train a dog. With children, it's the same. Get your children to learn this kind of skills so they know how to work with the dog. It's the most important thing. Uh, don't inflict pain on the dog and definitely don't teach your children how to, how to do that. I've got some video from TNG Kanekoso 
showing some very good examples on what you can do to teach your children or teach your child how to train a dog. Tell her to lay down. You can have your dog spending time with the baby, but make sure you are there all the time. Don't just throw a cane corso, a big dog, onto the baby's bed, expect it to be alright, or throw a baby onto the dog and think you'll be alright. I think that's crazy. I would not allow the children to uh, have to physically handle the big dog. For example, holding the lead. If the dog's out for a walk, I will be holding the lead or there will be no lead. Uh, I, sh I would not have my six-year-old holding the lead. I probably wouldn't have my 10-year-old holding a cane corso because when they take off, the force is so strong. If the child don't let go, they are going to get dragged along. They are going to knock on things. They are going to hurt themselves. Uh, or let a child play tug with a big dog. Unless the dog understand that he has to be very, very gentle, I would not risk it. If you are having children, make sure you always monitor your children with the dog. A lot of people want big dogs for protection reasons and that's very good, fair enough. But I don't think they should, you, you should train your dog to be aggressive towards children. You know, if you want to protect your home, why should a dog be aggressive towards children? When I get a puppy, I always take them to schools, playgrounds to make sure my dog associate positive experience with children. What I mean by that is when you have a puppy with little kids, you're imprinting them with positive social experience. If you have a child that's about to annoy your dog, you know, don't let the child continue to do the same thing. You want your dog to like children, make sure the children is treating the dog well, and the dog's calm, gentle before the children. You also want your dog to be well trained, obedience trained. So when you have a command for your dog, uh, such as recall, calling your dog back in the public places, you want your dog to respond to you uh, instantly. So a lot of training for that kind of response is good. It's for dog, whether they listen to you the first time or after the 10th time, it's all habit. If your dog is trained to ha habitually look at you and see if you're happy with what they are doing, that's a well-trained dog. Some stubborn dog might test your boundary a bit. So I highly recommend rules and boundaries are very clear for the dog. If you give your dog too much space, so much that humans have to get out of the dog's way, that can be a dangerous thing. So this applies to baby and children, but it also applies to adult. Like I've known, I've heard of testimony of a lady who has a cane corso, a big dog. Um, she loved the dog so much, she let the dog sleep on the bed. I mean, these guys can take up more space than a, than a human because they have the four legs stretching out. So they, they spoil the dog to the point that uh, her husband and herself has to get out of the dog's way. So when the dog jumps on the bed, the dog can slip in the middle between the husband and wife and the dog can slip whatever the position he wants. And the humans have to move around to give the dog space. And one night, um, her husband just, by, while he was sleeping, he moved the dog in a particular way. The, the dog jumped up became aggressive. The other night she moved and the dog bit the lady in the arm. The husband woke up, tried to get the dog off and the dog bit the husband. And in the, as the result of that, they don't trust the dog anymore. The dog was euthanized. To me, if you had to go down that road, it, might, it, it would be better if you just let the dog sleep on the floor. Uh, don't take up space. We're not talking about the dog sleeping on the bed or not. We're talking about how much uh, rules and boundaries do you give to the dog because they, they are pack animals they have their own understanding of the world if they think that they're supposed to get everything they're asking for they demand for and they don't get it and they get angry with you you let them get away with it it can escalate I think it's more important that you understand their nature and be very serious about establishing clear rules and boundaries in the house be very serious about obedience training so far we've been talking mostly about how to pick a puppy, how to raise a puppy with children. What if you have an adult dog and you're expecting a baby, a new addition to your family, and you want your dog to get along with the baby, or you have decided you don't want to get a puppy, you want to adapt an adult dog. We have Alex Children, Five Star Dog Academy, to give us some tips on how you can train an adult dog and get your dog ready for the baby coming to, coming to your house.
Okay, here's Alex. Yo, what's up, man? Alex here. Hey, so came across this post right here, man. Me and Nikki chop it up pretty often, man. She's the cool ass cat. Uh, and this is a subject that kind of comes out pretty often, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, so, anyways, man, I want to just say, uh, you know, reminded me you're always out there at the top of your game and grinding, bro. Uh, and I, I appreciate that. I admire you. I just wanted to, you know, throw you this, my throw you just a little bit of advice. It was more getting the dots condition to the sound and the movement of the baby strollers and stuff uh, before um, bringing home the baby. So that's kind of what I did. That's kind of what I coached. Um, and that's what I usually do. Um, advocate, you know, if the dog has never been around babies, small children, um, doing some small things as far as having the baby cry and weird noises, you know, pretend like you're holding a dog. <laughs> Um, you know, just kind of weird stuff like that. Give them the, the, the dog a new picture. Sometimes these courses can become a little possessive over the handler owners and, um, you know, not know what's going on. Here's a new object in your arm that's making this up type of noise and it smells a little different. Uh, so I just like to make, make these dogs as comfortable as possible. So something I always recommend for uh, new dogs um, is being introduced to baby objects as far as um, you know, mother, daughter, or father, you know, holding the baby, walking around, baby crying, strollers, um, being put in a sit say down says where you're unloading, loading stroller and, and baby equipment, um, you know, um, and stuff like that. You know, just making sure the dog is I mean, first, second time. It's not the dog's first or second time being around baby stuff or baby movement. So I think, you know kind of doing some small role play works out and that's kind of what i did here with some of this small uh, little videos this couple was expecting so i just kind of manipulated some small little baby movements um you know with a doll um so i never recommend you know putting the baby um you know in an exercise like this so it's a good idea maybe start off with the baby i mean a doll baby and then when the real baby gets there make sure if the baby's to be left alone um if the baby's not a play toy, um, they, the, the ex that you see me, hey, the, ba the dog walks up and sniffs it. I felt very comfortable with the dog uh, for some time. Uh, so I don't recommend doing it right off the bat. You're putting the baby in a small, vulnerable position. Um, at the same time, when the dog's a toddler, you know, make sure it has its own space with the dog. A lot of times people want to put a toddler and a young puppy or a young dog. And the toddler just sees as another play toy grabbing ears and grabbing them and playing rough with them and laying on the dog. And uh, the dog doesn't understand that type of play is unusual and uncomfortable. He may growl or, or give some type of movement to try to defend himself or just let him know, I don't like that. And that can be looked upon very badly, uh, especially from the handler owner. So I try to avoid those scenarios as much as possible. I would recommend uh, having the dog stay in a playpen or, you know, whatever the puppy or the dog is at or the puppy in a playpen so they can be around each other. Or say the the young toddlers walk around playing with his toys and now the dog's in their crate watching the family. Um, just so can get used to the movements. They can still be around each other. The dog can still remain calm. You can reward calmness um, and, and stuff like that. You know, you got to obviously you gotta expect if I bring these two dogs or a little young puppy, I mean a young puppy or a young dog into an excited motion with the toddler one to play that dog usually ends up kind of interpreting hey this is my uh my play buddy as well too so just small little things man uh um get back to me let you know what you think about that if you need more info bro let me i love alex accent the way he talks so much energy and after that i, I guess you know the whole idea alex presented here is to get your dog used to something they don't they're not familiar with and dogs are pretty smart once you get them to get used to the objects the uh, the baby trolleys and all the stuff um, just slowly introduce your baby to the dog and make sure Every time when the dog meets your baby you are there uh, you are supervising everything and that should be sweet ass I hope you enjoyed this video uh, The whole idea came from making the first video I posted last week that kind of calls Carne Corsos are excellent with babies and they are. Just don't want to give people the wrong idea. You can just chuck your baby with a dog and not worry about it. Uh, that's not how it works. If you do like our video, please click subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a like and comment down below on some of the things that you do to help your dog, um, to, to socialize your dog and to help your dog to get along with the baby and help them bond better. Well guys, that sums up everything I'm about to say today. Um, you probably noticed I really, I read every single message that comes to my channel. 
there's about 11,000 subs now but I'd still read every single message so if you have any questions any comments keep the messages coming I do read them all and I answer most of them if you haven't already subscribe click like and I'll see you next week ciao